Welcome to the Tree Zone. Today, I'm gonna give you some funky tree knowledge to sprout in your brain forest. We're gonna go over some of the most interesting kinds of trees from all over the world. Let's get into it. First up, we have this beautiful chungus of a tree known as the Baobab. They are a genus of eight tree species native to Africa and Australia. They are among the longest lived trees. One individual that died in 2011 was found to be about 2,400 years old. But let's get to what you're thinking. Why it looked like that. The Baobab is thicker than Brock Lesnar's neck due to water. The areas where these trees live tend to have water scarcity issues. This has led the trees to evolve to be able to hold thousands of gallons of water in their trunks. They are able to do this because their wood is much less dense than other trees, allowing it to hold more water, kind of like a sponge. Because of this though, if they lose too much water, their weak, porous wood can collapse without the water there to hold them up. This has led them to have very thick trunks and hard, calcium-rich bark to help support themselves. Even still, if these trees get too dry, they will collapse. In recent years, there's been a large die-off of these trees, and the leading theory seems to be dehydration due to climate change. Also, some of the baobabs produce fruit. Interestingly, the Australian baobab fruit is supposed to taste a bit like sherbet or citrus. Fun fact, Reese's peanut butter cups and lime sherbet go together way better than they have any right to. Many baobab species are considered endangered because they have been cut down for agricultural use, and they are slow growing. Next tree! <laughs> The manchineal tree is native to the Caribbean and much of its surrounding coasts. Looks like a pretty normal tree, right? Wrong. This tree is also known by another name, Manzanilla de la Muerte. For the less Espanol inclined viewers, that means little apple of death. The manchineal is filled with a toxic white sap that can cause numerous health issues, including blisters. Kind of like Charlie Sheen. The sap is present everywhere in the tree, including its fruit, which kind of look like little crab apples. If you stand under the tree in the rain, it can cause skin irritation. If you burn the wood, the smoke can cause damage to your eyes. If you eat the fruits, your throat will swell and your guts will bleed. While this is happening, the black spine iguana will laugh at your weaknesses and happily eats the fruit and sleeps in the tree. They are chill like that. The tree was also used to poison arrows by some of the indigenous people, which helped one bow user score a damage over time kill on Spanish raid boss Juan Ponce de Leon. No one is known to have died from eating the fruit in recent history, but if you see a crab apple on the beach, I would still avoid eating it. The manchineal is currently listed as endangered in Florida because of loss of habitat and because people understandably do not want poisonous trees in their yard. Next tree! Next up, we got the Indian banyan tree, which shocker lives in India and the surrounding countries. The Indian banyan is interesting because the more you learn about it, the more it seems like an eldritch god. It is part of a group of plants known as the strangler figs. This term has to do with how the tree grows. A banyan tree starts as a seed like most plants. The seed can germinate just about anywhere, including on another tree. The young tree will then wrap itself around its host and grow vine-like tendrils that will attempt to reach the ground. Once the tendrils touch the ground, they will develop roots and expand and keep branching out and make more tendrils that go into the ground. These trees can snuff out the trees in an area and continue to grow till they take up thousands of square meters of land with thousands of roots that have grown from branches to the ground. Some of these larger banyans can look like a one-tree forest. The trees are considered sacred by many in India and there are often temples built near large banyan trees. There are famous banyans in India, such as the Great Banyan and Kabirvad, that are landmarks in their area. There is also the Lahaina banyan tree in Maui, which was gifted to the area in the 1870s by Indian missionaries. The tree was severely damaged in recent wildfires that went through Lahaina, but has started to show new growth. The tree will probably lose 20% of its previous mass, but should grow back. Maybe this toughness is part of why the Indian banyan tree is not considered threatened. Next tree! <laughs> Will the quaking aspen is a common tree in much of North America. Sometimes it is also called the trembling aspen or the trembling poplar. The reason it has all these wiggly ass names is because the tree's leaves are very mobile when the wind gets blowing. This is because they have very flexible petioles, which is our word of the day. A petiole is the stalk that connects a leaf to the plant. You may be thinking, okay, what's weird about them? They're just a white tree. Well, what is interesting about these aspens is when you see a group of them in the woods, you may not be seeing a group. See, these aspens are almost like the opposite of the banyans we just talked about. Where the banyan goes from the air down into the ground, the aspen spreads through the ground and then comes up into the air. When you see a grove of aspens, that is usually just one organism. Each grove is a clonal colony where all their roots are connected. If you are somewhere with aspens near fall, you can actually spot the different colonies. All the trees in one colony will change their leaves at the same time. So sometimes the mountain can look kind of splotchy because the different colonies are at different stages in color. One aspen known as Pando is believed to be the largest organism on Earth and one of the oldest. Pando takes up 106 acres and has about 47,000 trunks above the ground. Each of those trunks is a clone that only lives to be about 100 years old, but it is believed that the root system could be up to 14,000 years old. Other species of clonal trees are believed to be even older. The Antarctic beach and the Wallamy pines in Australia are possibly tens of millions of years old. 
It hasn't been confirmed yet, but it is possible that some of the fossils of trees in the area of the Wallamy Pines could be previous clones of the living tree. The quaking aspen in the Antarctic beach are not currently considered threatened. But the Wallamy Pine is considered to be critically endangered because it had been believed extinct till a grove was discovered in the 90s. Next tree. Right now, you may be thinking, Bob, why are you showing me Charlie Brown's Christmas tree? Well, respect your damn elders because that ugly busted ass tree is one of the oldest living organisms in the world. Bristlecone pines are three species of trees that live in the American Southwest. They are believed to be the longest lived trees, excluding the clonal trees we just talked about. One bristlecone pine in California named Methuselah has been verified as being over 4,800 years old. These trees grow high in the mountains just below the tree line in soils that most other plants aren't interested in. This lack of competition is very helpful for them because they grow extremely slowly. There have been reports of 40-year-old trees that were only 15 centimeters tall. Even their leaves are long-lived. Some of these trees have been found just sitting there with needles on them that are over 45 years old. Bristlecones have very dense wood, which is filled with resin, and this makes them very tough. It also makes them very susceptible to fires because resin is extra flammable. The age of these trees has been very helpful for climate scientists. See, the rings on a tree are fatter or thinner depending on how much water the tree gets. These trees give scientists a way to see the precipitation levels of a given area for thousands of years. Scientists can even get extra data from these trees because these trees have a tendency to just stay standing when they die and not rot for hundreds of years because they have tough wood and live in a dry climate. Future scientists will probably be able to do a similar thing with Keith Richards and Donatella Versace. Ain't nothing getting through that leather. The bristlecone does have a little bit of pizzazz though because when their pine cones first come out, they're purple. These trees are currently under threat from mountain pine beetles and a fungus called the white pine blister rust. Because of those factors, plus fire danger, and the fact that it takes forever to grow one of these damn things, they are currently considered to be threatened. Thankfully, pretty much every grove of these trees is now in protected land, which means we don't have to worry about them getting cut down at least. Aside from when that one guy got his tool stuck in the oldest tree in the world and cut it down. Story and description. Next tree. Last we got the pretty patty of trees, the rainbow eucalyptus, which lives in the Philippines, Indonesia, and Papua New Guinea. Fun fact, it is the only eucalyptus native to the Northern Hemisphere. These trees engage in technicolor shenanigans, where their somewhat normal brown bark peels off and the newly exposed inner bark goes through a range of colors from green to blue to orange to red and yellow as their tree flesh reacts to the air. Something to be aware of with these trees when you look at pictures online is a lot of them have engaged in what is known as color saturation fuckery. This has become an overall issue with landscape and nature photography in general in the digital age, where everyone tries to make the mountain they took a picture of look like a stupid jelly bean. Here's a more naturally colored photo next to what generally gets posted online. Natively, they grow in rainforests, but because they are fun looking, they have been imported and planted in many other places. They are very frost intolerant though, so they can really only be planted in winterless places like the tropics or the southern US. Interestingly, this tree's main use besides being pretty is making paper. You're thinking, oh cool, is that how they make confetti? No! All the fun colors get drained out of it by the nasty ass chemicals that paper mills use, which is the reason why if you go buy a paper mill, it always smells like shit. Its use of this would be fine in theory because it's a pretty fast growing tree, but in many places it is being clear cut faster than it is being planted. This has led to them being listed as a vulnerable species. However, they have become an invasive species in the US because they are out competing local trees. This is an even bigger issue than it sounds because the rainbow eucalyptus is less fire resistant than many native species, so their spread can increase forest fire danger. This leads me to something that is important to remember when you see a cool tree online, like in this video or on something like Pinterest. If you're looking for a tree to plant in your yard, the best choice will be something native. They are already adapted to the environment, so they will require less work. On top of that, the birds and wildlife in your area have evolved with it, so it will provide them a nice home. Also, if you do some Googling for your area, you can often find programs that will either give you a native tree or in some areas give you a rebate on your water bill or some other thing. I put a link in the additional reading section below that has some info on planting native trees. That's all I got for you. Have a good day and eat something good.